Well, it's May 10th, 2016. We're on the corner of 3rd and Main. And uh, we've just got a little gathering here for the unveiling of the brand new bronze bust of Pierre Burton. We're going to unveil the sea shroud of Thai, uh, Harrison Tenner's creation, and then we will head straight to Arts Underground. Uh, and that's where we'll have our, our interview. Oh, Mr. Taylor's here, that's great. That's where we'll have our interviews and we can all um, talk to Harrison about how he created this and Rolf his inspiration behind this in the warmth and the dryness. Although I know that we're all celebrating this cold, wet weather and, and we're just <laughs> sending it towards Fort McMurray. Okay? So with no further ado, um, I would like to invite the mayor, the worship Dan Curtis, as well as Rolf Hogan uh, to come and and uh, Harrison and Mr. Taylor after they pull this maybe we'll ask you to come up for a photo as well uh, and so you can pull the veil of Pierre Burton Okay. There you go. <laughs> so we'll do a couple little photo ops here. Uh, Minister Taylor, uh, Harrison Tanner, would you like to uh, maybe stand up near the statue? Uh, Marg is here. Oh, good. I just want to get this. Artist Harrison Tanner, Elaine Taylor, Mayor Dan Curtis, Raul Hogan, and Margaret Hogan. And everybody looking this way? Decided in spite of the forecast indicating we're going to have a sunny day, they prepared for rain. So that's why our Thunderground is ready with coffee and everything else so we can go down there so we don't have to stand out here. <laughs> <laughs> here, here. So if we're wet enough, we could leave. Shall <laughs> 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 so we head towards Thunderground or we get enough photos or we and there's fourth and main the coast mountain sports store and the hogan center and we're going to go inside to arts underground Thank you, Miles. Himself, who will give his inspiration, Mr. Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, MJ. 
it's uh, it's not very often I get to say this because I was born here like like some of you and I've been here for 50 years and, and, and Ralph and Mark Hoban have contributed uh, to our community longer, literally longer than I've been alive and I'm not that young, I'm 50. So I, I, uh, I was really impressed to see that Mr. Hogan was inspired in Vienna in 1955 with his, uh, on his honeymoon to see the, the bronze bus and I, I think that many people that come to our community are going to be likely uh, inspired and they're going to go back to their communities and think that perhaps they too should have a writer's row or, uh, or five bus of people that were really exceptional within our community. And I think that uh, with uh, Mr. Hogan, I agree with him. I think that, uh, that Jack London is, is definitely stands up there. And I was saying it kind of uh, a little bit facetiously, but I think that if we can look into the crystal ball, I think there's a spot uh, on Main Street for, for Ralph and Mark Hogan as well. In time, and not for a very, very long time, of course. But I think, I think that, uh, you know, we, 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 have, we have them here, which is awesome. But I think that the thing that impresses me the most in a community is, is how your children turn out. And I, I think that though the Hogans have been, uh, the senior Hogans, have been uh, incredible volunteers and contributors to the community, I look at their children and I'm so impressed by the work that they've done and in our community. And they've really, uh, they've really moved mountains uh, and they continue to and they do, quite, do so quite humbly and without a lot of pomp and ceremony, but I know they, uh, in, in my role, I'm able to see what they do for our community and I'm really impressed and I just want to give my, heart, uh, my heartfelt thank you to the entire Hogan family for everything you've continued to do for our community and, uh, and for our country. And I, I really do truly uh, appreciate it and I, I want you to know that because I really mean it. So thank you for everything you continue to do. Uh, this, the five bronze busts are, are amazing but it's, um, it's only a small part of what they've done and what they've, what they've contributed to the fiber of our, our community and our society here in Yukon. So I thank them very much for that. Thank you. What I'm going to do is I noticed some photographers having a little bit of trouble because we have some lights out. Would you like to station Mr. Hogan somewhere else? When yeah, he's just speaking? so we can see him. But yeah, <laughs> it just but, dark. Yeah. <laughs> I don't um, know if I can spin Rome, this. We can have you stand. Uh, where would you like? Well, I'm just trying to get a little bit of light. Yeah, I noticed that you're it's just really a little dark. Bit of trouble there. Where would you like him to move? Somewhere where there's some light. Where would he lean? Uh, <laughs> all right. You know what? We're going to do a little switch here. We're going to ask you to. If you, want me to start. <laughs> I want to thank the mayor for those very kind words that uh, he spoke a moment ago about the Hogan's, the Hogan family. I'm just going to stick with that theme for a moment. As many of you know, we had six children, all married, all live in the Yukon, all have their own families now, 18 grandchildren. They've all gone off to school somewhere, and as of this summer, uh, 10 of them will have graduated and have come back to the Yukon. Uh, they have, some of them done a bit of working uh, in Toronto and elsewhere in the country. They're long range, and immediate, their immediate and long range thinking was the only place they want to live in the country is the Yukon, and they're all coming back and I can foresee that when the youngest one, who's probably five years away from having to make that final decision, having graduated at that point, uh, I would think we might have 18 out of 18 living in the Yukon. So we're very happy about that. Now, uh, on the subject of, of the statues, I think it's already been, been uh, mentioned as the number. And the mayor uh, referred to Jack London as perhaps the most important writer because he is known all over the world. His book has been translated into countless languages. I know when we lived our year in France, in their library, in the house we rented, was Jack London, uh, of course, written in French. But I mean, and Russia, they've translated his works into Russian and so all over the world. So he's probably the most important. But when you look then at Robert Service within the English-speaking world, he's well known and his work has been outstanding. People all over the world. My father, who didn't grow up in Canada, but spent years in Dawson, he was always reciting Robert Service uh, just because uh, he knew him, for one thing, but it was also 
uh, that type of poetry caught on. And of course, our most recent one is uh, Pierre Burton, that many of you personally know. Uh, he just put, as far as Canada and much of the English-speaking world, he just put uh, the Yukon on the map. So we've had a whole series of very, very influential writers. And uh, as uh, the mayor mentioned, we got our inspiration on our honeymoon in 1955 in Vienna, and they had all these magnificent statues of their artists. You know, Mozart is there and Strauss is there, all along the uh, river's edge. And uh, we were so impressed. And that thought has never left us. It took a long time to get to the point where we started to create these. Uh, so we're um, just delighted that this now is, uh, is not the end, I don't think. We have one or two other people in mind that we think deserve to be uh, on Main Street as well. And we'll see how that unfolds in the future. But I want to particularly thank uh, Douglas, uh, I was calling him Nadiak when he asked for his pronunciation this morning. He's the director of recreation here in town. And it's uh, Natu, I think he told me, is the correct pronunciation. He's here, and he did a great job, first of all, in moving Robert Service from a, a hole in the wall spot down 3rd Avenue that no one ever saw it down to 2nd Avenue, and then he organized the pedestals on Main Street so that uh, everything matches uh, one after the other. So I want to pay a particular thank you to him. And of course we've had good government support, and of course uh, with us today is a representative of uh, the Yukon government. She's here somewhere. There she is. <laughs> Elaine Taylor. Uh, well, it's, the community support's been tremendous. And having said, Jack London is uh, the most famous. Uh, I've always wanted to see the North Access Road be named Jack London. And my hope is that someday the city council will pass a motion that will name that the Jack London Way as we have uh, the south entrance uh, the, uh, who is it? Uh, Robert, Service. Robert Service Way. Anyway, there are others who are going to say a few words. And I know we want to hear from Elaine Taylor and we want to hear from the sculptor who did the work and produced the, uh, the last two of these statues. Okay, thank you. <laughs> a moving exhibit, isn't it, Tay? Hey? Well, I just, I want to first off um, congratulate and thank Rolf and Mark Hogan for all their contributions over the years. I think Mayor Curtis has already said it very eloquently, but um, I, <clears throat> you know, I have to say even the building we're standing here today uh, is a very unique collaboration between the arts and cultural community and the business community. And, uh, and that I, I refer to is Arts Underground and also the H Hogan Heritage Gallery. And, you know, it was developed <clears throat> and it came over a number of years ago and it was a great collaboration and it still is. And it's a perfect space for being able to collect visitors and Yukoners from afar to really partake in a celebration of what makes us very proud to call Yukon our home. And that is our, our cultural industries. Um, I want to thank them though for this <clears throat> recent uh, unveiling as well and uh, Pierre Burton I don't want to say too much more other than I always remember uh, Pierre Burton as uh, being the star and of course you know carrying the show front page challenge and he was a very uh, colorful uh, individual and he was also a very uh, eclectic writer and sometimes could be a little bit controversial as well uh, but you know what, he, uh, he really put uh, certainly our territory, our country, 
on the map, on the international stage. And for that, it's fantastic for him to be showcased now on Main Street here in Whitehorse as well. Um, I also just have a personal story that, you know, when I was in university, uh, Mr. Hogan actually <clears throat> came to my attention that there was this thing called the Jean Sauvé International uh, Youth Gathering. And uh, I was in my second year of university, and Mr. Hogan actually sponsored my way uh, to go to this international conference and national conference of young leaders and really help contribute to uh, my path and to where I am today. So I just wanted to mention that as well to the Hogans as well for their long-standing contributions throughout the territory uh, and throughout our country as well. And what, last but not least, uh, of course, we'll be also seeing uh, the unveiling of the old telegraph office as well and the exhibit at McBride Museum. And the Hogans have been a major contributor to that as well. Uh, one of many different uh, exhibits and many different investments. And last but not least, congratulations to Harrison Tanner as well. It's a, another beautiful piece. And, uh, you know, we see pieces of Harrison's and many other uh, sculptors throughout the territory. But uh, well done, Harrison. Thanks. So congratulations and thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Taylor. And um, uh, she did allude to an event that will be hap happening in a couple of weeks. Uh, press releases haven't gone out, but I would like you to have advance notice. On Wednesday, May 25th, we will be celebrating over 70 years of Hogan's Limited. And as part of the anniversary, we will be um, celebrating, as Minister Taylor said, the opening of the Telegraph Office. In the Telegraph Office, uh, Patricia Cunning at the McBride Museum has developed um, the Innovator Series, celebrating Yukon innovation. And she will be presenting the history and the innovation of telecommunications, much of which was pioneered by Rolf um, many, many years ago. So it's going to be a very exciting event on um, Wednesday, May 25th in the evening. Uh, and all the information will be forthcoming. But that's, it's going to be quite special, and the first tours of the new Telegraph office will be given that evening. But I'm not taking the limelight away from <laughs> one of my favorite artists, Harrison Tanner. Please tell us a little bit about your work before we wrap up and have some coffee. <clears throat> well, I, I want to say thank you very much to the Hogans once again for uh, the honor that they bestowed on me to create this piece. Um, I grew up in a house where my father had two favorite authors, and one was Pierre Burton, and the other one was Winston Churchill. And, uh, and that sort of piqued, uh, especially the Pierre Burton pieces, they, they, uh, it piqued my interest in the Yukon. And uh, lo and behold, I ended up here. Uh, so you don't know when you're growing up uh, what influences uh, will happen. Uh, the thing that did occur to me is that uh, Pierre Burton is known as a, as a uh, a historian of the Yukon, um, but I don't think he's nearly in the class of the Hogan family. Uh, the the historical work that she, the Hogans have done uh, is amazing, like no other community I've ever known. So, uh, once again, I just want to say thank you to to you and to the whole family. attending today and everyone else who has come we really appreciate your support so please help yourselves and um, we might see you on Wednesday May 25th thank you our email is always last name T A N S. That was unveiled today. Just your your, your thoughts and you know crafting a, a piece about such a historical figure for you. I I was overwhelmed. I mean, uh, Mr. Hogan's always a man of few words, and he sent a, a an email to me and he said, "Would you be interested in doing a bust of Pierre Burton, Ralph?" And I kind of went, 
Oh my God. <laughs> and I, I hyperventilated, put a bag over my head, and then realized I was just supposed to breathe. But anyway, it was, uh, it was uh, a huge honor. Huge honor and, and nerve wracking. How long did it uh, take you? What, uh, if you can walk us through the process at all? Uh, well, I, I was asked in. August of last year, and uh, it was completed uh, and back to us from the foundry at the end of January. So it was that period of time, about six months. Uh, the, the difficult thing is is to look at about a thousand photographs, two-dimensional photographs, and convert it into a three-dimensional sculpture, uh, and, and try and get a piece of every one of the the intergenerational photos that, that they have of Pierre. Uh, Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just wondering, is this, uh, yeah. did you say, like, is this part of giving back to the community because the community is, you've, you've, you've um, been a businessman all, all this time, so could you just talk about that, like, why you wanted to have the statues up? Well, that specific project was then from our experience on our honeymoon, seeing the statues okay. and Mozart and Strauss and all of those in Vienna. And we had it in mind, always, but never got around to it. Because we've been busy with other involvement in the community since, uh, well, since uh, about 44 and on. And I founded an organization called Young People's Association in 44, 45. That continued for about 30, 35 years, owned by and run by uh, young people. Uh, and I had many successors in that organization until...